Hello and welcome to a new video on my YouTube channel Cryptography for Everybody. In this video, we will have a look at a part or an encrypted part of a postcard and we will decipher it. You probably remember this here, this video, and in this video I decipher a letter of the silent movie star Mary Miles Minter. Mary Miles Minter was involved in a murder case and she was among the suspects of the murder case. And she sent a letter to the one who was murdered and that letter was encrypted. And I deciphered that letter in the last video or in one of the last videos. And after I published this video here, I got a comment in the comment section from a viewer, the Pukush. And he asked me or he told me, and that I will show you now, I have a postcard to Edward Sands, who was William Desmond Taylor's valid housekeeper. And William Desmond Taylor was the one who was murdered. And there is a part of the postcard written in a number, code or cipher. And Sands, who was the receiver of that postcard, was serving in the US Navy at the time and the postcard was sent to him from a friend who was in the US Navy, so perhaps the cipher is one they learned while serving the military. At any rate, Sense was a suspect in the Taylor case, as was Mary Miles Minter. I would certainly be interested in deciphering the message in the postcard. And I thought, okay, this is very interesting, but at first I wanted to know what, who, who is this Edward Sands. And I made a Google research and I found a Wikipedia article. And Edward Sands, or Edward Fitzgerald Snyder, was a suspect in the murder of Hollywood director William Desmond Taylor on February 1st, 1922. So this was correct. And then we have this disappearance here. An eyewitness reported seeing someone leaving Taylor, you remember the one who was murdered, bung bungalow around the time he was murdered, but her description does not fully match Sand's appearance. The police considered Sand Sands as a strong subject, but never issued a warrant, a warrant for his arrest in connection with the murder. Sands reportedly quit a job in Northern California and disappeared the day of the murder. Subsequent investigations turned up evidence he had likely been arrested previously for petty crimes and had apparently de deserted from the United States Coast Guard. And Sands was never found. And I was really interested in seeing this postcard. So let's go back to the video here, to this comment section. And I wrote to the Pukush and asked him, I would be re or told him I would be really interested in seeing that postcard and try to decipher the cipher text. Then I, of course I asked him for his background and why he's interested in the postcard and where he got it. And he nicely then sent me a picture of the postcard that I will show you in a minute. And he told me that he is interested in that case since he has a background with the silent movie scene. I think his mother was uh, married or she was the daughter of a silent movie star. I don't remember exactly, but he has a connection to this and he's also very interested in that William Desmond Taylor case. And he obtained the postcards on an auction. And he found, of course, then this encrypted text and he's curious to see what the content is. And he's also researching the backgrounds of the postcards and the case and so on. So he was really interested in having the plain text. And yeah, I tried my best to decipher the text. And now I will show you the postcard that the Pukush sent to me. And here's the postcard. And of course, when I get a cipher text or a partial cipher text, we have some plain text here, and this plain text will be very helpful as we, uh, as we see it later. I first created a transcription. The transcription we have here. And we have the text, first the plain text here, or what we call, we don't call this plain text, we call this clear text since it has never been encrypted. And here we have also clear text. So the clear text is yours, O and H. We assume this is an O and an H, but I'm not 100% sure. Then we have glad to hear you will be rated soon. Newport is a bum place and well, I know it. Three months more, never again. And then we have, and this is also very interesting, her address is, and then we have some digits that are separated using dashes. And then we have a get me and then something like yours friend or friend Bill. And here, this is the interesting part for us. This is the ciphertext. And at first I thought this reminds me of Morse code. 
in a Morse code, and if you don't know Morse code yet or you don't know how it works, I made a video about this also on this channel. With Morse code, you have two different symbols. You have a dit and a da. The dit is a dot or a, and the da is a dash. And dit is a short tone and the da is a long tone with Morse code. And since we have here only ones and twos, I thought this could be dits and das. And the three that we have here is probably the separator between the words. And the three, three at the end is probably a signal. This is the end of the ciphertext. And yeah, so I first, and, and my girlfriend helped me, she also worked together with me on that ciphertext. I first changed this to Morse code, that I can try to decode it in Crypt 2. So we have to uh, change this here. So we have to replace uh, the dash with a space. Then we have to replace the one with a dot. And the two, and this is wrong, uh, this is wrong, this is one and dot, and then two with a dash, and then the three with a slash. And suddenly, <laughs> this here, and this is wrong, this is 20, and suddenly this looks like a Morse code. And the 20 we assume could be something like a street number that is, has not been encrypted. So we copy this Morse code here and we go to Crypt 2. And in Crypt 2, we can search for Morse code since we have a template for that. And here in Crypt 2, we remove this, 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 and this since we do not need this. And then we add the Morse code here in the text input. The Morse code component can decode the code for us. Decode. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, postcard solved. Yes, unfortunately, it was not the case. So it was not this uh, Morse code here. So <laughs> this was, was not Morse code here. And as you can see, when we decode this using Morse code, and I will make this a little bigger, it's an F, E, I, E, umlaut, D, A, O, umlaut, Ö, and so on. It doesn't make any sense. It, it's not an address, not a girl's address. So probably this was not Morse code. And then now you say, okay, you probably used the international Morse code. You should use the US Morse code. And we, we thought the same, probably maybe it's a US Morse code. So we had a look at the differences and we tried to decode it using US Morse code, but it didn't work. So Morse code was a wrong assumption. So back to our cipher and restart. So let's have a look again at our cipher. The next assumption we made was that probably or maybe they created their own code and this here just encode single letters. And they have a common code that they use to write to each other. And yeah, that's what we did then. We tried to analyze it in that direction. So we copied this here and I changed this to a uh, cipher text that I can work on in Crypt 2. So I replace the dash here by a space. And then we can copy this. And I use the homophonic substitution analyzer. Why did I use the homophonic substitution analyzer? We don't have a homophonic cipher here. We probably only have a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And the homophonic cipher allows that um, different ciphertext letters encrypt the same plaintext letters. I use the homophonic substitution analyzer because it allows me to manually change the assignment of letters. And we change here the substitution analyzer. We have English, use spaces, symbol separate. This is, everything is fine. So let's start this tool here. And now we have here our ciphertext. And here we will see a problem plain text. Now before we can start this we have to change the so-called key letter distribution. That means how does this uh, analyzer distribute keys among the letter uh, among the uh, distributes letters among the key. And we have here for instance a minimum number maximum number that means he can write now it can write now use three a's up to six a's and of course monoalphabetic we only have one letter for or one for each letter so we have to change everything to ones. And this changes our homophonic substitution analyzer to a monoalphabetic substitution analyzer, but with the possibility of manual changes. 
So I have right now to change all this to one and probably in the future I should create a button that allows this or a setting that automatically changes this. Right now this distribution is based on the language here. So I have to change it now to once. And then we can go to the analyzer and we can just start the analyzer. And then we get some texts here as solutions that look like English text, but they don't make any sense. For instance, a dead man's oppressed reese tea. Or we can restart this. A hand sing this all the something. And I can go on all the night and do this here right now. But it doesn't make any sense. So automated analysis doesn't make any sense. But we can do a manual analysis and we can use some of the context we know. So at first we assume that three here is a separator of words. So we change the three here or the, the plain text at the position to a space. Then we know that the 20 is probably plain text so we can also fix this to a space. And the 33 at the end is also probably uh, space since it's the end of the cipher text. So probably there's no plain text representation here. Now we had a look at this and we saw now we have one, two, three letters probably and a very uh, um, um, words and a very small or short word. And at first I thought this could be in since we have on our postcard here, we have here Newport, Rhode Island, for instance, in Newport, Rhode Island. But then we thought that could, this could possibly also stand for an abbreviation, for instance, like ST for street or B, uh, BV for boulevard or so. And this is, a, this is quite often used in this way in the United States, as I learned. So when we assume this here is ST, it automatically, since at the same positions here, here we have the 21, 21, and the 21 uh, here. Where is it? Um, is it 21? Yeah, here, the 21, 21, and 21. These all are S then, because we fixed it here to S. It has to be S here. It's the same uh, ciphertext letter. This means our street starts with an S. And we can also see that if this is a street's name, in the middle we have a double or two double letters that are the same. For instance, TT and uh, I don't know, uh, FF, GG and so on. So I thought, let's have a look at streets. And I found this nice web page here where you can have a look at list of street names in Newport, Newport, Rhode Island. And we know that the street we are searching for starts with an S. So we go to the streets names, uh, street names with S. And we know it's, it ends with an S and it has to have two letters in the middle that are the same. So we have, for instance, here Sullivan, but that doesn't make sense. We have no S at the end, but we have here the Simmons Street. Here we have Simmons Street. It starts with an S, it ends with an S, and we have two M in the middle. So let's try Simmons Street. So we change here this to an I, the G here to an M. Then we have here an O. And we have an N here. Simmons Street. And this works. So um, we can change this to Simmons Street. If this works here, we get here INI, if this is correct, in the first name, when we assume that this is a first name here. And to be honest, here we have to have a letter. And then in the, in the last name, we have also ON at the end. And actually, my girlfriend, <laughs> by chance, found a name that would fit here and it actually was the correct name and she also suggested the correct name here but since I was a little stupid at that time and I, I thought I saw something that doesn't fit and so on I said no no that can't work so stupid me and I wrote an email to the Pukush and showed him the results that we had so far of course I told him that here we don't know which letters we have to put in here and if it makes sense to him. And he wrote a nice email back and, and said, yes, it makes absolute sense and he will search for the name. And a few hours later, I think he showed, uh, wrote me a second email and, and told me his wife found the name and uh, he told me the name. And then he had to confess that when he was searching for a fitting name that uh, of a girl that lived at Simmons Street at that time, 
His wife went into his room and asked him, well, what, what are you doing there? And he told her, I am searching for a name for that postcard for this encryption here. And she said, oh, can you show me the postcard? And he gave the postcard to his wife. And yes, she then solved it independently from us completely without having a look at what we found out so far. I think this is a great achievement. And he also wrote me that his wife is really good at uh, crossword uh, puzzles and ciphers and so on. And she even told him, why didn't you give me the postcard at first? But then I wouldn't, wouldn't have fun in trying to solve it. So he came back with the name and I was really curious or it was uh, I was really uh, surprised to see that the name was a name that or two names that my girlfriend had also suggested and I told her no no that can't be <laughs> so yeah it, it reminds me uh, the, the Pukush um, uh, listen to your wife and for me listen to my girlfriend <laughs> so the solution here is Winifred I think this is a really nice story so this is E, and it, it, it fits perfectly, as you can see here. So we don't have to change any of the letters at other positions. So this is Winifred. And then we have here, we, we already use the I, the E, and the O. So uh, we only have the U and the A left. So here we have an A, and then here we have the L. And the complete address then is Winifred Fallon. 20s Simmon Street and then of course in Newport, Rhode Island. And I thought, okay, this is really cool, it fits, but did this Winifred Fallon actually live at that place at that time? And I asked uh, the Pukush if he could um, check this and he searched in, um, how you say that, in um, census records and he found in a census record an entry, he nicely marked this here, and he actually found here, um, can I zoom in? Oh, I can't right now, I think. Oh, I can a little. Here we have at Simmons Street 20 in Newport, Rhode Island, at that time, so this is from that time, a family with name uh, Fallon here. We have Fallon William, that's the father. We have Winifred, the wife, the mother, both 50 years old and both from Ireland. And then we have two sons. Uh, I think this is Thomas and no, uh, Thomas and Joseph. Two sons, 128, 124. And then we have a daughter also named Winifred. So at that address, in that time, the Winifred Fallon actually lived in that house. So we could confirm our solution. And I think this is really great. You decipher a text and everything fits perfectly. And yeah, now um, the Pukush can try or uh, he can um, investigate more of the background of that girl and of, um, of that case. Maybe he finds out something new. I don't know. He, he can go on with research on that. If you're interested in that case, I suggest that you write questions below this video. Maybe the Pukush is so nice and answers these and uh, gives you some hints. And yeah, um, how could we solve this ciphertext? So first of all, I have to say it's very short. When we remove the spaces here, the 20 and the 33 at the end, we have in total, we have a total of 28 letters, minus one, two, three, four. So we have 24 letters, one, two, three, four, five. We have 23 letters in the ciphertext for a monoalphabetic substitution. So for one by one substitution of ciphertext letters, 23 letters is a very short. And it's even below the unicity distance. That means that in theory, it's unbreakable. <laughs> but why could we break this? We could break this because the sender made a lot of errors and mistakes. The first error he made was to uh, write separators between the words. That eased our cryptanalysis things, uh, since the separator, the three here, uh, told us the length of each, each word. That was the first or one of the mistakes. Then, of course, he wrote what type of plain text we have. He wrote her address. So we have to search for an address of a girl or a woman. So this is also a very bad mistake. And then he didn't encrypt Newport, Rhode Island. So he knew where to search for the street. And uh, yeah, that, that all the, the context here helped us to search for the name. And after deciphering it, 
using the um, uh, the consen uh, the, the census record, we were also able to even find out that this girl actually exists. So I'm 100% sure that we deciphered or decrypted the postcard in the right way. Yeah, and I think that was really interesting and really nice. So I really had fun in <laughs> analyzing this. My girlfriend also, she really likes to work on such riddles. I hope that helps you, the Pukush, to further work on that case. And yeah, I think that was really a good thing to work on this. And of course, I could make a nice video out of this. So yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you, that um, sometimes you can even break ciphers below the Unicity distance with enough context knowledge. Yeah, and that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. If no, you know what to do, give a thumbs down. Also, I would be really happy if you did not yet already subscribe to this channel, then please subscribe. It really helps me it really helps us to make Crypto 2 more popular. Yeah, and as I said, it's everything. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.